meeting is being recorded. And I can share screen and pull up the agenda. Can everyone see the agenda? Yep. Yes. Okay, so our first action, well, I'll let Phil do it because he is. The... Do I need to read the pursuit to chapter 20? Sure. Yep. Can you <laughs> enlarge the agenda, Jen, please? Yes. Thank you. All righty. Pursuit to chapter 20 of the Acts of 2020. One, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. See instructions below. No in-person attendees of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technical logical means. Great. Our first meeting item, am I calling the meeting to order? Is it on a form? Mm -hmm. All right, we'll call it at 636. And then uh, public comment is next on the agenda. And it does not look like we have any attendees, am I right? All right, so I guess we'll move on from that. And then HRC members report. Any report outs from anybody? No? All right, then I guess we get to the fun part of the meeting, which is a welcome, everybody. I think that we should probably go around and say our name, our affiliation with the town, maybe how long we've been here, something like that, to that nature. And if someone wants to go first, they can take it. I'll go since um, I guess one of the senior members right now, which is really weird to me. But uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Elizabeth Haygood. Um, I'm a resident of Amherst. I was came up here in the late 70s in order to go to UMass. I raised my two sons here. I now have five grandchildren as well. I worked at the school a total of 40 years um, in a lot of different capacities mainly as a phys ed and a health teacher, but also activities director. And I, uh, what else? I'm a member of the Amherst Area Gospel Choir. I'm a track and field official for all over the country. I'll be leaving for Kentucky next week. And I've been on the Human Rights Commission. This is my third and maybe last year, who knows? What do you... <laughs> My, I'm up in June, so I said maybe, stop panicking. I like how you just slipped that one in there though. <laughs> okay. Um, Phil, do you wanna go next? Yeah, I was just about to say, I'll go next. Um, I'm Philip Avila, I'm the co-chair of the Human Rights Commission, also on the CSSJC um, committee, as well as I work at the Amherst Survival Center, and I'm the community meal coordinator over there, as well as the Jedi co-chair. And I've been in this town now since 2018, I believe, give or take a couple months. Um, and I also have a son who attends our, one of our elementary schools. Uh, I'll pass it off to you, Jen. Okay. Well, hello everyone. I'm Jen Moyston. I grew up in Amherst. I have three children who, one is in the, currently in the school system. The other two have graduated from the school system. I'm the assistant director to diversity, equity, inclusion here at the town. I've been here for, at the town for nine years. Um, and in this position for the last seven months, I am also a co-chair with Philip for JEDI and I'm a board member at the Amherst, well I'm actually now the vice president of the board at the Amherst Survival Center and I, um, yeah, that's me. And so now we have our new folks, which is very exciting. Um, 
so we at the Human Rights Commission really like to have youth here with us um, because, you know, as much as we'd like to say we're hip and understand what's going on, we don't. And so we really need that perspective from the youth. And so I'm going to go ahead and let you guys introduce yourselves and I'm going to start with Victor. All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Victor Cruz. Um, I live in Amherst. I've been here ever since I was born, 17 years. Um, I'm a senior at Amherst Regional High School. And this is my first and official, I guess, uh, like town, uh, I don't know how to say it, but basically this is like my first time actually being involved with the town officially. And um, I'm excited. I'm excited to voice what I have to say as well as contribute with everybody else. And yeah. Okay, Julia, thank you, Victor, and welcome. And Juliana? Uh, my name is Juliana Shepard. I've also been in Amherst for my whole life, so 17 years, give or take. Um, I'm, a, I'm also a senior at the Amherst High School. This is also my first town-related meeting. And so far, it's pretty fun. It's interesting. Um, already been to the town clerk's office once. Very cool. And I'm excited, too. Excellent. And so now we have new staff. Jen, can I just add a couple of things mm -hmm. that um, Juliana and Victor did not say? Um, this is not their first um, go around when it comes to social justice issues and items. They are members in good standing. And I believe this year officers of People of Color United at the high school. And they're also both good students and exceptional athletes. That's all. Spoken like a proud teacher. Way to go. Yeah, that's awesome. Jen Cedric's in the waiting room. <gasps> Yay. So, Philip, you should um, now uh, reconvene in the meeting. All righty. Or restate officially that oh, you're gonna make me read that again i did well oh. the first time <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm joking, I'm joking. All right. yes welcome cedric we have a quorum now so i'm gonna go ahead and read off the pursuit pursuit to chapter 20 of the act of 2021 this meeting will be conducted via remote means members of the public who wish to access this meeting may do so via zoom or by telephone the instructions below. In-person attendees of the meetings of the, of the member of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public may adequately access and the proceedings in real time via technological means. And Cedric, we're kind of going around introducing ourselves um, to our newer members. Uh, you missed that introduction from Victor and Juliana. Um, but if you don't mind just introducing yourself, your whatever you do with the town and all that good stuff. <laughs> hey, how we doing? Hey, Vic. Hey, Juliana. Hello, Pamela. Hello, Liz. Philip. Hey, Jen. How we doing? Uh, some of y'all may know me, but if you do not know me, I'm Cedric Gane. I am from Philadelphia and I moved out here. I work in the education system uh, and I also outside of that work with um, teenage teenagers and middle schoolers in athletics and I coach as well. I am exhausted, but I'm happy to be here. <laughs> uh, good to see y'all. And I, I just think we have to say that Cedric does a great job boosting the confidence of young youth, um, particularly our BIPOC youth, and so helping them elevate and empower them and understand their true value as a being and as an athlete, so. That's awesome. Thank you, Cedric. So now, Pamela. 
Yeah, so I am Pamela Nolan Young. I am the new director of the diversity, equity, and inclusion. So working with the Gen, um, and I have sort of a long history with Western Mass, but I haven't been in the area most recently. So um, I first moved to Western Mass in 1987, and I've been back and forth over the last several decades. My most recent position was at the University of Notre Dame working as the diversity director for um, the provost office, working with faculty and graduate students. So I've relocated to Amherst for this position and I'm very excited to, to be here and be back in a place that I love um, and working with Jen who has been really uh, great to have as a, as a uh, teammate. And we are so pleased to have you and excited to have you here with us, Pamela and Victor and Juliana. So we are gonna do good things. Yes, thank you everybody. And very excited to have new members and Pamela, you join us as the leader in charge over there at the town hall. Really excited about that. Um, our next, agenda item um, is the Amherst Police Department video. Before we continue, has everybody had a chance to review video and question here with police officers? Yeah, Cedric? Yeah. I have it up if, oh, yikes. I have it up if we, if you guys wanna review it. I am, I'm here, I'm, I just have to grab something so I'll be listening. But I'm, I'm right here. Do people want to view it or, or are we good? I've seen some head shakes. I've yes. Seen it a couple of times, so I don't need to see it, but if other people need to see it, that's fine. I think I'd benefit from seeing it again, just to kind of recap. That's fair. Jen, do you mind? Can you guys see it? No. Yeah, it's a little. We can small. see it, but we don't have um, sound. It hasn't. Okay. I think the sound is still off, Jen. All right. You, you, you have, dude. I, I don't even hear that you have your rights. Because right now, as a juvenile, you don't have rights at this point. You, you've lost it. Why do I not have? All right. You've lost it. You're not an adult. Do you have an ID? Why do I? Do you have an ID? No. no I have do you have a school ID? School ID works. You got school ID? Only guy do have an ID. You, you don't get to make a call right now because you said so because you're detained. Because you can't be out right now. Can you repeat that again? You said we don't have rights. No. Nope. You can't have rights. Why do I have rights? 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 Dude, we've we're talking told to you about the noise, and you wouldn't ID yourself. So now, but enter. you're 16 years old. Hey, I'm, I have, I have listen, you're fired. Uh, guys, I'm waiting for hey, AAA to come listen to me. And, and help me with Do you want to know? They're here. Do you want the answer? Yeah. You're gonna keep talking over me. I'm, I'm, I'm. He asked me what I'm doing. Okay. I'm telling him I'm. In Amherst, now. there are bylaws mm -hmm. for noise. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, Jen, for sharing that and. I think um, we'll open it up for discussion right now, kind of people's thoughts, opinions. Uh, I have lots of them, but I will open it up to the commission right now. So I have a lot of thoughts. It's just like Philip does. Um, the first thought is, did the police happen upon these young people or were they called? What was the nature of them being questioned, detained, whatever it was? Um, obviously, there was um, some unprofessional comments. I don't know if the word unprofessional is strong enough. Comments to the youth. Um, 
about not having any rights, which is disturbing to me. Um, apparently they were, according to what I overheard, something happened with their car and they were waiting for AAA. Um, I was assuming that the police in that instance should be helping, not chastising. Um, uh, and the other question I have is, what has become of the two officers um, since this has come to light? The other thing is when I was reading the newspaper article, it said something about um, not knowing how Vera got the, the uh, recording. And for me, that doesn't matter. Um, so that should be taken off the table if that's gonna be a question for anybody. And also I know because I was up talking to Jen and Miss Pamela the other day that there was a meeting with uh, our town manager. And the question I have is what are their findings and or um, positions on the video? What are they doing next? And if in fact, I hear that something that I feel like is good enough, if you will, that's happening next, um, I will have nothing further to say. But if I feel like <coughs> there's something stronger that needs to happen, I will weigh in again. I'm done. Thank you, Liz, for sharing. Uh, Pamela, do you want to respond or do you want to hear more questions or, I mean, more statements? Yeah, I, I think it's probably best for everybody to ask their questions and then I'll can answer. Um, at the end, I'm, I'm happy to answer now, but it might be better off to just wait. I, think that makes I, agree. Sense. I, I agree. I have some questions slash comments. Um, so if they were having trouble with the car and they're waiting for AAA, where's the noise complaint coming from? Like, are they playing music too loud on the side of the road? Or something, in which case, why are they sitting on a curb being yelled at? You know, like this feels like it's already a tense situation. Your car is already broken down. You're, you know, somewhere out in the middle of the night. And now you have two police officers telling you you don't have rights. So I feel like that is really just elevating and escalating a situation that doesn't really need to be. Because if I was on that curb, being talked to by police officers and telling me that because I'm an adult and because of whatever I may have done, I don't have rights. That would that would freak me out. I just want to add to what Juliana said. Coming from like this perspective of a young person, it's kind of awing the fact that these kids are being or these teenagers are being kind of yelled at or like being treated as an adult but like when it comes to thinking about do a lot of juveniles actually have ids do they really have identification with them it's not something really common as you get older i mean as you get younger sorry um and it's just very i think it's it's kind of what you already said it's kind of this like tense moment already so the fact that you have these police officers yelling at you, asking you for IDs when you clearly don't have any, it kind of just escalates. And then you're already being told you don't have no rights. So you're kind of in this position where you're too scared to say anything. But as we saw in the video, they were constantly questioning the police officers, asking why, why don't they have rights? Why do they need their IDs? And I just think overall it should have been handled in a, way better and not as tense manner. Thank you, Sharon. Cedric? Yeah, I, wanted, uh, I just want to add a question would be just for the, for not just only the police, but 
just how de-escalating the de escalation skills, if there's a way where the police can work with teachers and deal with students so we can connect and and when they run into these situations, because uh, that's just a, a simple, seems like a, a routine de-escalation where we get like teachers deal with this a ton where, hey, students is having back and forth and you can just have like, learn how to de-escalate the situation and not escalate it like the students were saying, where it's like, where it gets to a point where, okay, you have to address the situation how how can we collab and make and solve these situations until there's other people that can come and de-escalate it or things like that but if it's going to be as of right now what can we do right now that how we can help these officers de-escalate with students and have a conversation or teach or have teachers willing to have these conversations or um, or even counselors or some some type of people that do these things all the time and then work with these police officers so we can you know just like they have some things for us we can offer something for them as well as a as a school because now we know these kids and then it can be it's much easier when you kind of have more background a little bit on the kids and then you're like oh, okay this is what this works with these you know if you see these similar students or um, now we can work together instead of against the police and teachers here and town here and, and it becomes a split. We need to, it's a small town, we need to work as a unit. No, those are all really great points. Liz, do you have something to say? I was just going to say that it, was, it would have been interesting to me. It looked to me that like both of the officers were fairly young. Um, and what was their training beforehand? And again, we don't know what happened before or after the video was rolling, but what transpired beforehand, what was the call? And if the call was a noise complaint and you come up upon some children and they're saying, I'm waiting for AAA, my car broke down, it could have been as simple as, how can I help you or, and, or, um, well, we heard that you all were making a little noise. Can you just keep it down a little? And that would have squashed the whole thing. Um, so what was their training? And given the tenor of these United States, why is it okay for them to be saying these kind of things in this era today or last week or whenever it was? Yeah, totally. I think I'll piggyback right off there. I think that my concern is definitely with the call right because as each each individual for ourselves you know you hear noise whatever why is it automatically thought oh i need to call the police why are we not kind of going out there to go see that oh there's young people that are kind of just stuck in the middle of nowhere to offer maybe some help to offer maybe some assistance like hey do your parents know that like you're kind of stuck have you called AAA? why are we not checking in on our youth as a community to go ahead and make sure that a situation can be dealt with in many different ways than calling the police officers i think that's number one for me in that way and then just going off of the whole video i don't know that if there has been a human rights complaint violation yet made by anybody within town, but I definitely think that if there has not been that this commission should definitely look into that because telling someone that they have no rights to me is a very strong human rights violation because that's just what it is. Then last, I would say that the town's lack of ownership and response to the whole situation is also very concerning. There was a post the day after for to increase our PD and advertising hiring more police officers. That is very tone deaf to me on the response to the situation. 
And then at Monday's meeting with Paul and the town council, very briefly discussed it, was not a main agenda item. And I understand that they had their own agenda to go off of, yet why are we not responding in a way that then puts this at a high priority list on their agenda? Because that's what it should be in our town. It should automatically jump to number one spot and that should be the discussion of the night. And then for what I understood when I attended that meeting, it was very unclear if our new press department would be responding at all to noise complaints. And how is that going to transpire? Is that something that they will respond to? Is that something that the PD is still going to have a hand in? How does all that work? And I think I'll leave that there. Okay, well, I will do my best to answer all of the questions raised, but if I miss something, then, you know, please remind me um, towards the end. So I think uh, the first thing I'd like to say is that the Amherst Police Department did not receive a formal complaint um, from the parents uh, of the youth that were involved or um, from anyone else, because citizens could also file a complaint. And we are limited at the present time by the procedures that we have currently in place at times. So we don't, there has been some discussion about the creation of a resident oversight board for police. And Earl has mentioned um, that he would also like to have Cress as part of that process, but it doesn't exist now. So we're, we are limited by the current um, policies and procedures that exist for the town as far as a response or to review the incident. So um, in my capacity as the director of the Office of Diversity, Equity and Inclusion, I did um, send a request over to the Amherst Police Department to ask for further review of the incident. They will have to follow the collective bargaining agreement process for that review of the incident. When they do that, then they will respond back to me with more additional information. So we're at, I would describe this as a somewhat awkward um, point in the town where there's a desire to have other alternatives in place for review, but we're not quite at, um, at that point yet. Um, it is very likely in the future that Cress would uh, respond to noise complaints. I don't wanna say they're gonna to respond to all noise complaints because you know I can't make that absolute, but um, certainly uh, I think um, had Cress been up and running, this is the type of situation where uh, dispatch might have asked Cress to respond. Um, Cress was not able to respond at this point because they're just in week two of their eight week programming. So they're, uh, program for training. So they're not up and fully running at this point. Um, so they weren't in a position position to respond to this incident. I think um, the incident has presented the town with uh, a case study where we can sort of start to look at what are the protocols that we need to have in place, what other procedures need to be ha have in place so that during the interim time between the um, time that Cress is up and running and fully active and the creation of a resident oversight board, we have some other protocols or policies or procedures in place that would help both in the response to an incident like this or others in the future, as well as for what um, response the town might have um, in reviewing or overseeing um, you know, an incident of this type or other in, or other incidents. So I'm, I'm gonna just see, look at my notes. I tried to take notes from, um, from my understanding is that there was a call that came into the police department from a third party complaining about noise that it wasn't that the police just happened upon the, the group. Um, I don't yet know the answers to um, what trainings these officers have received or will be or were off, offered to them. I think that will come in the response to my request for additional information. Um, 
I think uh, your questions about de-escalation training, I know that CRESS has gone through um, or as part of their training program does have de-escalation training. I'll, I'll have to inquire about that type of training from the police department. Um, Um, the, 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 the point of the question about the commission, whether the commission needs to file a complaint, I would, um, would probably make the argument that the inquiry that I've made might substitute for that. But obviously, as a commission, you would be free to, to make a, an additional complaint or additional inquiry. Um, and I think those are the questions that I can respond to. If I if I missed a question, you know, please ask it again. God bless. So while I understand all of that to some degree, um, this is still troubling to me because. Um, it's my understanding that the video was sent to the police department and the town council. And um, Mr. Bockelman's office, maybe that's you, Pamela, I guess. Um, I'm not sure why there has to be a formal complaint if the chief of police have seen their officers acting in that manner why does there need to be a formal complaint before something is done, either by uh, suspension, stern talking to, loss of pay, more training to these two officers that responded? That does not sit well with me at all. And there should not have to be a formal complaint if you saw the video for you to know as an officer in any town that that is not the way to handle a situation, especially given young people and given the tenor of this United States in these times, that's not good enough. They should not be, be hiding behind some bureaucratic red tape about this, that, and a third thing before responding to what is definitely troubling to the most human beings that saw it. Mm -hmm. So, I, I mean, I, I think that the answer is that in order for any sort of discipline to take place, it has to take place within the parameters of the collective bargaining agreement. And, in, and until there's a change in that structure, um, that it's not, it's not really going to um, be, I don't wanna use the word lawful, be valid, perhaps that's the, the best word to use. So police officers, as you know, are, their behavior and conduct and employment conditions are governed by a collective bargaining agreement, and that would include discipline. And so the a collective bargaining agreement does have a specific protocol that we as the town or as management would have to follow. And um, if we did not follow the procedures uh, laid out in the collective bargaining agreement, then an officer would have a right to um, object and appeal any a discipline or decision that was made and would have a right to appeal to the Civil Service Commission. So it's it's in the town's best interest to follow the collective bargaining agreement. It doesn't mean that we won't reach the income, you know, the outcome that so many citizens and residents uh, desire, but it does mean that we really should be adhering to the collective bargaining agreement. Because we if we stray from the collective bargaining agreement at our own peril. And by our, I mean the town, so. I understand that, but yeah. is the chief of police even looking into it? They don't have to make any decisions, but they could at least put out a statement to somebody saying, this yeah. was disturbing to us as well, and we're looking into it. Yeah, yeah I'd second that. Yeah. I have yet to hear any comment on the PD's end, right? whether that be neutral, against it, for it, whatever the comment is it just leaves citizens at a point to where we're kind of just like what going on day 15 here six, 16 of radio silence and that's my comment on the town council as well yeah so i um 
Uh, I, unfortunately, I can't really speak for the Amherst PD, but I, I think your point is well taken that um, some public response would have been appreciated. I think what's also concerning to me is that you bring up a good point, Pamela, that our eight responders that we're going to have from Crest may respond to some noise complaints, may not respond to them all, whatever it be, whether it be a joint effort or not. And I think it goes back to Ms. Haysgood's point of what training is being done. Are we now going to only train Crest officers in this way of responding and ignore PD's training and leave whatever's in place for them to respond in whatever way they want to respond? Are there going to be two separate responses? Like, hey, you're gonna call a press and you know they're going to kind of treat you with the kitty gloves, so hopefully they show up? Or is it gonna be with the PD and you don't know what type of response you're going to get? So I, I think those are very legitimate questions. Unfortunately, I just don't know the answers to them, but I'm I'm happy to um, to find out and inquire about the training from the Amherst uh, Police Department on de-escalation tactics. Um, but I, you know, at this point, I just don't know the answer. I, I do know that um, from conversations with, with Earl that he is in conversation with the police department about future response to, no, to noise complaints. And you know, while I think it's likely that most of them will go to press, I, I'm hesitant to say all because there will probably be some situations where maybe press can't respond because they're at another you know, location or um, the, there might be a situation where it's called for a joint response. So I'm, I'm, I'm hesitant to give an absolute, but I know that they are definitely in conversation about what their response would be going forward. Joanna, go ahead. So do we know if anyone can file a complaint about the situation or does it have to be someone directly related to the incident? Because if so, all we need is a complaint. Right, so my understanding is that anyone could file a complaint and that my um, inquiry serves sort of as a form of that complaint. That's, so the, my inquiry to the police department has gotten the, the ball rolling. They wouldn't be doing anything necessarily any different if a second or a third complaint come in because they've already started their review process. Okay, because that officer saying to these kids that they don't have rights, I mean, you can't, you can't just do that with nothing happening. Because I feel like, yes, it's really good to get that general basis of training and making sure there's a response system like CRESS, but also there's a personal responsibility there of each officer. And some, I feel like something's gotta happen there. So yeah, so, so I think one of the things that, and, and I don't, fully know the answers to all of these uh, questions, but one of the things that I've been looking into is how we would uh, establish the Resident Oversight Board and how that board would um, interact with a new legislate, well, new uh, legislation passed in the Commonwealth in 2020 that created it's uh, the title of the legislation is POST. It's actually Peace Officers Training. It's a certification that all officers in the Commonwealth have to, um, to adhere to. And included in, in the POST legislation are requirements um, that if there are incidents that relate to discrimination based on race, gender, just you know, all of these protected classes, there's a mandate that, that those incidents be reported to the state post commission um, and a record would be kept for um, towards whether an officer would be uh, certified or decertified. Decertification would mean that an officer would not be able to be employed within the Commonwealth. So I, um, as I said, you know, I'm just beginning to sort of dig deep into the, to this area. I don't uh, know fully all of the answers, but I think that there may there may already be a mechanism in place where um, 
a complaint could go to could go to post. I, I, I need to spend more time with the legislation to uh, to know the that answer completely. But um, there are certainly I think between what is projected for the resident oversight board and what currently exists under state law, there are some mechanisms that would um, allow the, the town to respond. Hi, um, I do know that CRESS right now, the people that were certified as CRESS responders are being trained as we speak. Uh, and the question I have is, as the members of the Amherst Police Department, you mentioned that there would be sometimes having joint, going out on joint calls and is or will um, APD be mem um, part of some of those trainings in conjunction with uh, the CREST responders? Yes, so I, I believe that next week, the CREST responders are scheduled to do ride-alongs with the police department and there are plans for them, for them to do some training together. I don't have the specifics of like what's, you know, which particular sections, what topics they're, they're being trained on, but there are definitely plans in place for the crest responders to do ride-alongs with the police and for the police to be involved in the crest training. Thank you. Uh, Victor, Cedric, do you have anything? Um, I guess this could go to the whole commission or even Ms. Young, but I had a question on, even though I understand that it's we're talking about what we could do for future cases like this, about kind of who takes control or who, who visits um, the complaint, but in the meantime, what can us as a town do to help the people that were in this situation and that are kind of living with this uncertainty that they were told they have no rights as 16 year olds and the fact that there was 10 of them too i feel like it kind of um increases this uneasy feeling that they're not safe in their own town because they're being told things like this um and i'm just kind of hope hoping to like open up what can we do to help them in the meantime so that question was raised last night at the CSSJC um, uh, meeting as well. And I believe that, um, that the CREST responders are going to reach out to uh, the, the youth that were involved in the incident to, to, as a follow-up. Um, but so there, there are some people who are thinking about ways in which we can be uh, supportive uh, um, in that that way. Yeah, thank you. I just have two follow-ups. Uh, the first one is, from my understanding, this police officer in question is still on patrol. Is that a yes or no? I That I don't know. I mean, I, I haven't, my inquiry to the police department um, see today is Wednesday I think I made the inquiry I don't know if it was it may have been late on Friday afternoon of, of last week uh, but I haven't received any information and I don't know whether the person is on patrol or are or, or not on patrol um, I, I will say um, just as a matter of background so in one of my prior jobs I worked as a city solicitor for the city of Springfield and um, Suspension of a, of a police officer is um, it's not always a very immediate, easy thing to do um, because of the collective bargaining agreement uh, requirements around personnel matters. So I, I don't know of what the status is of, of either of the officers involved in, in, this, in this case. Okay, that's fair. Um, and desk duty, Anything else other than a suspension is not on the table at this well, time. I just, yeah. I just feel like having that person out in the community right. without any response is definitely concerning. So I, 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 I mean, I don't. I mean, I think the takeaway is that I would want to leave is that I don't know what actions mm -hmm. the um, Amherst Police Department has has taken. Certainly, anything could be on the table based on. 
you know, a number of different factors, the police officer's prior history, and, you know, lots of things go into what would be um, the disciplinary process for a police officer, as it would be in any employment set setting. Um, I can inquire about the status of these two officers. I simply don't have that information at yeah. this time. Mm -hmm. That's fair. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so if you can make that inquiry, that would be great. And then my um, last follow-up question is, timeline-wise, what are we looking at for a report back? I know that you said that you made the inquiry last Friday. Right. Wednesday, so, I know time takes to look at all that stuff, but. Yeah, so I, I would be hopeful that um, if not by the end of this week, that early next week, I would be receiving something back from the police officers. I um, I did review, I, I can't remember, Jen might have to help me, the collective bargaining agreement for the police department. I'm not sure which day that was. So I, I um, I'd have to go in and look at the timeline for, because all of these things are, are, are really by contract. So the, the, the police department supervisors would have X amount of days in which to conduct an investigation. And then there are X amount of days for an officer to respond and to have union involvement. So the, it's a very structured process. Um, so I'm, you know, I'm, I'm happy to look at the collective bargaining agreement again and share that information with the commission because it's, public knowledge, it's um, the collecting bargaining agreement is posted on the town's website, but it is very structured. Right. Okay. Yeah, I just, once a response is made by the PD, I would, I guess, motion, suggest to this commission that we meet pretty immediately after, so that way we can create a response ourselves to whatever is reported out to this group in the larger community. I think that at the very least, if town officials and town council are not going to make public comment or anything that uh, as a commission, we can make that and hopefully some community members can feel that something is being done in a way that is acknowledging the severity of this incident. And then I just like to say, Pamela, thank you so much for the report back on all this. I know you're new to town and what a way to come to town <laughs> on this issue. So really appreciate you and everything that you're doing right now. Thank you. Thank you. Can I just add that I would like to see this on our agenda until we have some kind of resolution. So this should be on, you know, a follow-up should be on each meeting we have until we get something that we can either be satisfied with or need to move forward more forward on. Yeah, agreed. Does anybody else have any other comments on this issue? No? All righty then. Our next issue up is HRC complaint update, which Jen, is that you? Me or Pamela. Pamela, yeah. you can. Yeah. <laughs> I can just keep talking. <laughs> so um, we uh, have received in the last week uh, a new HRC complaint. Uh, uh, Jen and I are going to be meeting with the complainant via Zoom tomorrow. And um, in addition, I will say that uh, I have taken some time to review the bylaw for the town of Amherst that creates the HRC proce um, process. And um, we'll be working with Jen to create some procedures, specific procedures that outline how um, I don't like using the word investigation because we don't have a lot of authority to resolve a lot of issues. Um, basically, we have authority to mediate. Um, so, but we'll be outlining and, and trying to clarify what the procedures are for how the HRC operates as far as re uh, receiving and reviewing and taking action on 
on, on complaints. So, um, so that is ongoing. Got it. Thank you. Um, will we receive any notice or anything on the complaint from tomorrow? So the the um, uh, the complainant has um, asked to remain uh, confidential, and I think one of the things that we'll need to do as part of the procedures is really outline um, what the process would be when we receive a, a confidential complaint. I, I I will tell you from past experience, um, confidential complaints are very very difficult to take action on. Um, for obvious reasons, you don't have a name complainant. The, the person wants to, um, doesn't want to discuss or disclose publicly. So what they provide in most cases is a way in which you can record and document um, a complaint against a specific respondent, right? So that if you get a second one of that nature, you have the first one. But it's going to be difficult to take action on something in, where the person wants to remain confidential. Um, so all of those things are, um, you know, I will, I'm, you know, I, I am, have been reviewing some complaint procedures from other uh, towns in the Commonwealth that also have human rights commission. Uh, the most thorough one I found was from the city of Cambridge. Uh, I haven't had a chance to discuss this with Jen, but we will review all of these policies and make some recommendations for our procedures and obviously present that to this group for, um, for your input and approval. Um, but having a confidential complaint is, is very difficult to, to take action on. The, uh, my review of the bylaws, and I should also say that, you know, I am, as you know, new, and I'm reviewing all of these things for the first time, and laws can be sort of complex, but my review of the bylaws gives the commission a very wide range for topics or subject matters or individuals in which might file complaints, but our authority to actually resolve a complaint is very, very narrow, because as a, as a commission, you don't have authority to, um, to force individuals to take a particular action. So the, the, at the very end of the, of the uh, bylaws, it talks about voluntary participation from the individual. So you already have the complainant, but there's nothing that would force a respondent to come in. You know, if there's a complaint against um, a particular business or individual, there's nothing that we can do to subpoena or force that person to, to come in to um, to respond to me as the um, a human rights director or to the board. Um, but our last step would be to refer uh, a complainant to appropriate state or federal agent, uh, agencies. So an employment complaint could be referred to MCAD or to the EEOC. So um, MCAD is the Mass Commission Against Discrimination and EEOC is the Equal Employment um, Opportunity Commission. Um, so there are definitely agencies that could take action on particular complaints. And I'm just using employment as an example, but you know, there might be a complaint about a landlord or you know, um, a hotel around public accommodations, whatever the issue might be, um, we would, would have the ability to provide information and to make a referral um, to an agency that would actually have the authority to take action on the complaint. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, any other comments from any other commissioners? I, I would just like to add that the in the past in previous complaints, you know, I would say because the town doesn't have the ability to enforce anything that it really works to try to prevent it having to go to the next level of MCAD and that we also do support the individual as much as we can with getting that complaint wherever it needs to go. That's great and thank you both for meeting with this individual tomorrow. Next on the agenda we have an AHTF update. 
So that's the Amherst Affordable Housing Trust Fund. And uh, that SID was a member, was a member of the Amherst Housing Trust Fund, and he's not part of our group anymore. And okay. so we don't necessarily need someone to be a um, member of the Affordable Housing Trust because we can't appoint anybody from here to do that. But it would be good if somebody, since human rights, like, housing is a big issue in Amherst if somebody could report back on what's going on in their meetings if possible by just attending do we know what date and time they usually attend I know that's online but I don't know if you know yeah that. I think that they meet on was it Wednesdays because that's why Sid couldn't come could I possibly. can't quite remember I, I can try and take a look on the on online to see when they meet but yeah, I think that that's an important issue for any commissioner that has time to kind of hop in on that call. I think we hear a lot of housing and renting type of complaints amongst community members. Yeah, it looks like they meet Thursdays at seven by their last few agendas. Is that every Thursday or monthly? Okay. So that's something that I'd be interested in. Um, I'll just get a hold of Sid and see when, and if he could send me the information when he gets it so I can report back. That'd be great. Okay. Thank you, Liz. Then next on the agenda, we have a AH. RA update, a DEI update, a CSSJC, ROB, and CREST update. <laughs> That's a lot of updates. Yeah. Well, one of the nice things about having DEI involved in this is that we can keep all of the groups aware of what's going on, right? right. In the different in the different uh, boards and committees. So um, Pamela, are there any ones that you would like to take and I can take some of them or? Uh, I can take DEI and, um, and Rob. Okay. Right? Yep. So let me look and see what the AHRA. So the AHRA is the African Heritage Reparations Assembly. And so we have just been in order for reparations in Amherst to occur for taxpayer dollars. It, we have to have special legislation because current policies prevent us from funding one specific group or targeting one group. And so we just received special legislation information uh, from KP Law, which is the town legal council. Um, and so they are moving that forward as well as you know, the AHRA just applied for a grant or applied through another program at UMass for a grant that would help, that would give seed money to start a solar, a small solar, um, I don't want to call it farm, but a small solar, whether it's on a building or not, but a, a a solar program in which the pro profits or the proceeds could go back to the African American community. So they're currently waiting to get a response back from that. CSSJC has met for the second time. Philip is on that. They had a very robust meeting yesterday. Um, to the two youth, there's an open seat that should really be filled by a youth. So if one of you are not, you know, you can either think of someone who could fill it or fill it or try to fill it yourself. Um, I would just put that out there. Uh, so they're really, I don't know how many people are aware of the Community Safety Working Group, but they are the continuation of the Community Safety Working Group. So the working group, it's a working group, so it, it has been dis dismantled really and the CSSJC has come to kind of follow through and to try to hold the town accountable for meeting the recommendations or some of the recommendations that were made by the CSWG. 
The CSWG reports, if you guys haven't seen them, can be found on the CSWG page. There's also a link, I believe, on the CSSJC webpage that will link you to the CSWG. A lot of acronyms going on right there, but I think that's it. So the um, Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Department actually became official on July uh, 5th, so when Jen and I were sworn in. We have begun the process of thinking about and envisioning what a strategic plan would look like for our department and for the town. Um, um, so we've started working on, on that, and uh, I think we've made good progress. There's obviously, there's we have a lot more detail that we need to put in together, but perhaps at the next meeting, we might be able to present our DEI strategic plan. Um, the ROB, which is the Resident Oversight Board, I have begun the process of envisioning a timeline for the establishment of the Resident Oversight Board. Um, I've been reviewing the uh, data and the reports that were uh, done or compiled and, com and filed with the town by the uh, CSSJ, our working group, right? There are too many acronyms and I, for me to remember, but I, I have started to review their reports and um, have put together a very basic outline that I was reluctant to share publicly with the group, but I would think also by the time uh, of the next monthly meeting of this group, that that document might be one that would be, uh, be far enough along to be shared um, publicly as well. And then um, Earl isn't here for the CRESS update, but we know that he um, feels that things are going very well with the group and that um, uh, he's excited by the responders that have been selected and they um, are enjoying their very intense training to the to the, as much as you can in, enjoy um, uh, intense training. But I think he feels like things are moving along um, at the pace that he anticipated and he is going to be hiring um, for Jen you might have to help me with this, but a couple of positions. Yep, There should be an implementation project manager that is really to kind of help. Uh, hold the town accountable to the grant that it received so the crest department received a grant for four hundred fifty thousand dollars that has to be shared with the social service agency um but there's a lot of in between back and forth and that's what that implementation project manager would be doing is uh the lia being the liaison between dph and the town of amherst and i'd also like to say for crest uh prior to the responders being sworn in and hired uh, Earl, myself, and his program assistant, Kat, went out and did some pretty intense uh, community engagement events over different apartment complexes. So we did hit uh, Olympia Drive, I believe it is, and Village Park. We also went to Rolling Green. And so we had a pretty good turnout, um, folks. And I think, you know, they're still trying to continue to move forward with community engagement after the training process, because one of the things that needs to happen with Crest is they do need people do need to know that they are in existence. And the majority of the people that we met at these engagement events did not know that Crest was a part of was in existence. So it does say that we need to do some some good um, advertisement advertising of it. So please help spread the word with the community that they are in existence, that they are a department here. Uh, thank you both for those updates. That was great and awesome. Next on the agenda is vacancies. I imagine it's just that we got a ton of vacancies. And if you know anybody, let them know to join. Yes, we do. So we went through the, the Human Rights Commission used to be, as I said earlier, a a commission of seven, but it was hard to get a quorum. And so, you know, they had to go to town meeting, they had to go to present it to the select board to have them at the time when we had a select board, you know, to increase the number of the membership. And so it, you know, now we kind of have to figure out how to get those seats filled. I think I know someone that is interested. So I will definitely reach out to her and see if 
That would be great. And Juliana and Victor, as you are both seniors, if you're planning on going away to school or going away for job or traveling after uh, graduation next year, start talking this up in Poku and, uh, and around the school and in your classrooms, especially your government classrooms, your social studies classrooms for people who may want to join next year. We're specifically looking for someone who would be going into their junior year next year when you all leave so they can be there for at least a couple of years and not have to fill the vacancy each year. No pressure. Yeah. And I, I just have to, to echo that and say that the importance of having youth on not just the HRC, but on any of the boards and committees is really important because it's a whole perspective that we're just, you know, we're not necessarily as hip as we would like to say we are, we're not aware, right? So um, it's very important. So please do. Speak for yourself. Okay, girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> The so next on the agenda list here is the retreat, which I am not privy to ever having one. Miss Haygood, I know you, Cedric, were you ever a part of? We <laughs> haven't had one yet because of COVID and we have to have it in person. And I came on during COVID, Cedric and oh, I. And okay. Eric, there has so, not been a retreat since 2020. Wow. So none of us have been a part of it then. I have. <laughs> oh, I guess <laughs> Uh, no, actually, the retreats are really good because it's a way for the commission to kind of um, set some goals that they want to uh, reach for the year, right? And we've kind of been doing it annually or pre-COVID we were. And it also kind of helps drive the mission and, and bring people back to the actual mission of the Human Rights Commission. So we can meet in person to have a retreat. So I wanted to bring that up to the group um, to try to possibly figure out some dates for a retreat. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a nice day. You know, I, we get some breakfast, we get some lunch and uh, we just kind of sit and it's also really good team building, particularly when we've been on Zoom for so long to actually meet people face to face. So the Human Rights Commission has basically, except for our annual Human Rights Youth Hero Awards has met only via Zoom. Mm -hmm. I think we met in person when Petua graduated, you know, but that was it. Yeah, definitely. What timeline were you thinking, Jen? And maybe we can all start throwing out some possible other timelines. What yeah. <sighs> I don't know where the feedback is coming from today. So, um, you know, I think typically we've done it you know, early October, just so that everything can get settled with school coming in and people can kind of get situated with their school schedules. It's usually on a weekend, uh, Saturday morning, Sunday morning, you know, just depends on the group. Yeah. I prefer not the holiday, just saying. Yeah. So October 10th is uh, Indigenous Peoples Day. So if we're looking at an early October, we can't go until mid-October if we want to leave that long weekend open because we have October 1st, 8th, or 15th, or if we want to have it on a Sunday, it would be October 2nd or 16th if you want to leave the long weekend open for people to get away. And so, Cedric, I know that you in the fall have a football schedule um, that you have to meet, so is it's college level nowadays. So that's Saturdays, right? Yeah. Um, and I don't know if people attend church weekly on Sundays or not. But, you know, he's everywhere, so. <laughs> Any weekend in October, and if it has to be Sunday, it's fine with me. That's fine with me too. And uh, yeah, Juliana. If possible, the long weekend being open would be good. Okay. So um, we've got the second or the 16th. 
maybe do it the second. Does that seem? That's good. good. With me. Okay. Cedric? I gotta go check the football schedule on that one. We'll need you. We'll need you. October. <laughs> yeah. The second is a Sunday, so hopefully it's not an away game. You guys aren't traveling. Yeah. Most likely, because we just have meetings. It's every day, y'all. It's just every day meetings on top of meetings, but probably. Yeah. Is it? What time are we thinking? Um. All day thing or. Yeah, I think we usually do like nine to one or nine to two. Yeah. Uh, let me look. It's usually we have, so what happens is Saturdays, Sundays, we have like a meeting, a follow up on that Sunday, um, church in the morning or something. But I, we can figure it out. Figure it out. So I'll figure well, it out. It's okay. I mean, we can also make it later in the day too, if that works better for you. I mean, so I think we'll, I think I, I I can if it's one Sunday. It's not like it's every Sunday. It's one Sunday, so it's all good. I'll just show me connected that spot. It's all good. Okay. Um. So I would say between now and mid-September folks have things that they kind of want to expand on. Um, Juliana and Victor, I don't know if you guys have looked at the Human Rights Commission bylaws that are online on the town's website um, or the mission statement or have seen the Human Rights Commission webpage. But I would suggest that uh, everybody really take a look at that all and see if they have questions about it or um, you know, what their vision for the Human Rights Commission really is. Yeah, that'd be good. And we can even start a kind of running agenda for the retreat also. A parking lot, yeah. Yep. All right, sounds good. Um, before we move to upcoming events, um, can I just put out, I guess, talk to the group and then maybe put out a motion for this? I think that going back to the video that it would be great if we did make some type of statement and or complaint ourselves as a group. I understand, Pamela, that you've already done so and thank you so much for doing so. I think it also just speaks volumes that multiple organizations within the town and groups are adhering and taking the severity of this issue, even if it's the same as what you're doing. Other commissioners thoughts? I think that um, that would be something we should do, at least make a statement saying that we were troubled by um, what was presented and are looking forward to hearing from um, the police department, town council, uh, whoever, as to any follow-up to this incident or something like, and I don't know how to word these kind of things. Jennifer's much better at it than I am, but um, something to that effect. Are we all in agreement that a statement should go out? Yeah. See some head shakes, thumbs up, yep, okay. Does anybody want to try and write up a draft of that possibly? Take a stab at a rough draft. And I'll just throw out there, you can work in teams of two if that makes it easier. Um, but not more than two, because then that kind of gets a little sticky. I'd be willing to work on it if anybody wants to join. 
And I was thinking about Ben too. So you might want to reach out to Ben and see if he wants to co-write a statement. Okay. That's that's great. I'm sure Ben and I have done that before. So I don't see what issue there will be on his end, but I'll reach out to him definitely. And then we'll bring it out to the group. And do we need a meeting or anything to kind of put that out? Is if we send it to the group, can we just not a reply all, but a kind of reply to Jen, you're okay with it unless you're not? Yeah, and just so Victor and Julian, in case you know, you can never reply all. It's an open meeting law violation that, um, so you guys can create something and then you can send it out to the group. You can ask your group if they have faith that the two of you can, can you know, create this and just kind of vote that the two co-chairs create this letter um, just for Victor, Pamela, and Juliana. Juliana, yes. These um, tend to go on the Human Rights Commission page. If you look, there's kind of uh, three or four different letters of support for different events. Then we put it out on the Human Rights Commission webpage. And then we also usually put it out on the news and announcements from the town of Amherst. Uh, we can also do a press release where it goes out to the general press. I guess I'll leave that up to, I guess, this group, because I believe Ben, I'm 90% sure Ben, not 100% sure Ben will agree to helping with the statement, but is, does the group want to see the draft before it goes out? I would probably like to see it before it goes out. Yeah, that's fair. Yep. We just have to find a way so that if it does go out or if you want changes that we're not violating open meeting law. So I would well, say, go, the case, you, know. you know, I have trusted, you know, in all the statements that we've had in the past two years. So it's, you know, I have faith that Ben and, and, and Philip will be able to draft something that's reasonable and um represents what we are all feeling from our comments tonight so it's it's hard because otherwise we kind of have to schedule a meeting in between and i don't know that you know this seems like it's kind of timely and so the sooner the better um but you can philip send it out to the group and i would say if anybody has any you know really has any opposition to anything in the letter then you could contact uh you can send them to me and then I can forward them to the chairs. Oh, that sounds like a great approach if everybody is all right with that. Yep, all right. And then as far as filing a complaint, do we want to do that as a commission? Yep, and some head shakes. Yeah. So we can, I think you guys should. I don't know where that's coming from. I think you guys should file a motion or uh, create a motion for the complaint. Anybody want a motion? It starts off with I move the motion to. And then you just fill in the blank and someone seconds. Motion to what? To file a complaint. Of? Uh, it's my first time. Of what? What do you want to file a complaint specifically to? I, I'm having a hard time hearing you. Sorry. What did, yes, loud in it. File complaint. I just want to be specific. Uh, I don't want to mess. What's the, what are we filing a complaint to specifically? Um, you want to file a complaint in regarding the incident that happened on July fifth with the APD. Okay. But say that in your own words, and then restart the whole thing. Motion, a file complaint 
for the ATB situation on July 5th. Say Situation on July 5th. And then someone would need to second that motion. I second that motion. All right, Victor, stepping in. Yeah. Now, now, open up to discussion, right? Discussion. I just like to, I would like to add to the motion um, that adding somewhere in there about a human rights violation, um, like to motion and that this commission file a complaint in regard to the July 5th video from the Amherst Police Department as far as this commission is concerned as a human rights violation. Anybody else open for discussion points? Now, and we'll move it on to a vote. I'll just so we're voting on not judgment motion, but on your amended amended no. motion. Or no. Yeah. Yes, it would be the just the adding in of the human rights violation. It's Cedric's motion, just adding in. Yep. So I'm going to suggest that we approve Cedric's, and then we approve the amended version. Okay. All right, so then there'll be two roll call votes. So this first one is going to be on Cedric's motion. Uh, I'll just do a roll call. Uh, Liz? Yes. Juliana? Yes. Victor? Yes. And I am a yes, and Cedric is, yeah. <laughs> yes. And then if we want to add in the amended part, of human rights violation that I added in? Liz? Yes. Juliana? Yes. Victor? Yes. Cedric? Yes. And I am a yes also. And both of those votes, should have did it before, both of those votes have one absentee. I'll oh. get that in the minutes. Thank you. All right. Uh, so yeah, so I would just say be on the lookout for that email. I would like to get it done tomorrow, but I got a pretty busy day, but I'll, uh, if not tomorrow night, early Friday morning. To file the complaint? No, for the statement. Who's filing the complaint? Anybody want to take that on? Ben's not here, make him do it, no. Um, I will file the complaint. I would try to in check in with, with Ben to see if you guys can do that jointly yeah. as the chairs. I was going to do that for sure <laughs> in that email that I'm sending him, so. We'll go ahead and get that underway. Uh, just in the last couple minutes here, if we can, we might go a little bit over eight couple minutes, please. Uh, upcoming events for heritage and cultural celebrations. I believe it is just, is, which ones are coming up? Oh, there we go. Thank you. So August is national, I, I don't know why I'm blanking on that right now. <laughs> Civility Month. Civility Month. International Day of Remembrance of the Slave Train and all Abolition mm -hmm. and Women's Equal Pay. So making statements, is that what we're doing? It's like Facebook posts? Yeah, if people want to make a statement, then I can post it on our Facebook page to acknowledge that it's 
a heritage or cultural awareness day or month. That's the goal of having all of the different ones. I will say, um, so if somebody wants to, to, you know, write up something about National Civility Day or International Day for Remembrance of Slave Trade and its abolition or Women's Equality Day, that would be great. Otherwise, I can just do a standard Facebook post that says that it's National Civility Day, month day that goes on on our Facebook page. If anybody want to take that on, it'd be a couple sentences at most. Just kind of giving a great research on anybody's end if they want to take on a topic. So would it just be like a couple sentences summarizing what it is and what we're recognizing? Yep. Yep. And if you and can find like a little image or something. Do I need to have a Facebook account for this? No, you just send it to Jen, whatever you write up in Jen, we'll put it on our Facebook. We have a Facebook, by the way, for the new commissioners. And I would suggest following. Okay. Um, no. I can take the uh, National Civility Month. Awesome. Thank you. Anybody else? I could take any of the other two days. I would. I can take the Women's Equality Day. I would like to do a little research on that, awesome. especially given um, we are in 50 years of Title IX. How about it? Yep. All right. So then we'll have Liz do Women's Equality Day, and then Victor, that puts you on the 23rd. So if you could just both of you get that in again before those respective days, so that way she's ready to post. Yeah, I'd say like two, like two days before. Great. And then Juliana, I guess that puts it two days before the month of August. Um, September, let's, uh, I guess we probably should address that. Um, International Day of Peace, the 15th. Yeah, the other thing is, you guys can also think of events that you would like to create to have to celebrate these days. Um, so there are standard events that the Human Rights Commission celebrates. Uh, the Hispanic Heritage Month, the school uh, does an event on the common every year and the town council creates a proclamation. So I've already sent the proclamation over to the school for them to go ahead and revise it for the 2022 um, month, Heritage Month. So it's really about International Day of Peace if somebody wants to write something up for that. I think that's in the current standing of where we are in the world is a pretty good statement to put out there on our Facebook page or to acknowledge it. I can do that one too. Pretty great, thank you, Juliana. So you said that the high school is going to put on something for Heritage Month? Jennifer? I know, I'm just scared like to speak without like that noise coming back. Um, yes, so Marta Guevara at the high school does it takes the lead on on his on the Hispanic Heritage Month. There's also a flag raising that center. experience. I'm sorry, she's Liz. Would you? She's say? actually in the family center. She's not at oh, the. Oh, yep. <laughs> no, you're right. She's at the family center at the middle school. Okay, great. And they have a pretty robust uh, event for that day. Okay. Yeah. But it's it's less of his Hispanic Heritage Month and more Puerto Rican Heritage month I see. for her so the hispanic culture is very wide or very broad and big so we might want to just put out something that can stay up all month on our on the town web page yeah that'd be great um 
I could definitely craft something like that. Uh, but as far as Hispanic Heritage Month, would this commission mind changing that to Latinx Heritage Month? I think that within the community, it is very much a hot topic issue, Hispanic term. So I know that the town has a lot of um, different banners depending on some of these um, days of awareness. And do we know which ones we have and which ones we actually raise? I mean, there's the, the smaller banners that, that you know they have on the lamp posts in town. And then there's the big banners that they have that go across the common, across um, North Pleasant. North Pleasant Street. Do I want to say is that the right street? But anyway, um, do we know which ones those are? Because I yep. am always amazed. I'm just like, oh, when I, you know, when I go uptown and. So typically, we don't have anything that goes over the road banners. Road banners are 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 pretty expensive. Not to say that we we shouldn't, but we don't have anything that goes over the road banner except for for Juneteenth, and then uh, Juneteenth is the only one where we have the flags that go on the actual lamppost. Typically for what Martha does is she has the Puerto Rican heritage flag. And so it flies on the smaller flagpole here in front of town hall with the Nash, it's the blue one. So the United Nations flag, it flies underneath the United Nations flag. So typically when the town has a flag raising ceremony, we use the smaller flagpole with the United Nations flag on it. So that's, it was up for like, um, we do one for Black History Month. We do it for uh, Child Abuse Awareness Month. We do one for Puerto Rican Heritage Month, uh, Pride, almost, uh, just about almost every month we, there's one that's there. That'd be great. Uh, John, I'll connect with you. I'll go ahead, Victor. I was just gonna ask um, for the Latino Heritage Month, um, if the town works at all at like changing the language of the statement to kind of make it for those that are perceiving it to kind of feel more inclusive about it, if that makes sense. So I think that was similar to what Philip was talking about. Um, and so in whatever thing that is drafted that we post, we can enclose that in there. Marta is, uh, the proclamation that Marta does is for Puerto Rican Heritage Month. I don't, I. I'm not sure how that works out, how there's one out of multi. So that's something that we can work on and discuss or can even speak to Dr. Guevara, sorry, about it as well. We can reach out and see how, how that works out. Um. Um, but we can also create an event. And I know that there are lots of businesses that would help support that. Yeah. Um, I think if we create an event for that day, kind of like we did for Juneteenth, Jen, that might actually go over super well. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. And because it's you know September through October, we can just kind of pick an in right in the middle. Right. Yeah, I think that. Would on a weekend well. day yeah. yeah i don't mind helping out with that planning yeah so um we should probably have and i'm only going to say this juliana and victor you do a lot of times that a lot of stuff falls on me and then i end up creating this whole event so i'm going to reach out to this group to say that we should definitely create a little subcommittee to kind of help uh 
create this event. Yeah, definitely. I think that'd be great if anybody wants to join that. I will definitely be a part of that subcommittee. I'm interested in helping out too if I can do anything on my part. Okay. You know, we should re reach out to just, I guess we'll have a subcommittee time, but the salsa and the park people would be a great collab with them to get them down. But yeah. All right. So Victor and me and maybe other email. All right. We can email if you want to join that subcommittee. Just send out an email to Jen. That'd be yeah. great. And then other than that, I think that that gives us time to then for our next meeting in August to look at the October events. And thank you everybody for staying on a couple minutes past eight. Really appreciate that. And unless there's anything else anybody wants to talk about, I think we should adjourn. Jen? I just, okay. Um, we should determine the next meeting time. Our Wednesday's good for folks, six o'clock work for folks. Wednesday's fine with me and works. Said Drick. No, I'll be in camp at that time. If it's, unless it's early in like the first week of August. But that's the first week of August, I'll be in camp. Wednesdays is good for me. I mean, it, my schedule gets scattered starting in November, so it doesn't really matter what day you put it on. I have stuff every day, so. I can join in late, but I definitely won't be in by, I know we're going to be on the field around that time. Okay. Cedric, is that a week camp or like all everyday camp? Yeah, uh, it's summer yeah okay like a month long camp then <laughs> got it <laughs> Pamela? you have your hand raised okay um i'm sorry i did that um by mistake but i um i did want to make a suggestion if that's okay which is that uh that the recruitment efforts really work, that you try in vain to, to get um, new members before the retreat, because it would be wonderful to have new members um, before the retreat. And then um, the other th the thing that I noticed is, so uh, Liz had volunteered to join the affordable, or to attend the affordable, um, Amherst Affordable Housing Trust and I wondered whether there might be a list of organizations that you might solicit members from so that um, you get to pull some people in from, from that group as opposed to, yeah, I don't know. But those were just a couple of thoughts that I had. So. Yeah, those are great thoughts. I think that, that brings up a good point, like especially other committees and people that are already volunteering their time, maybe they'd be willing to volunteer a little bit more time elsewhere. So yeah, that's a great idea. Um, well, then it seems like Cedric, you're, you're saying that you're basically out the whole month of August. Yeah. Um, so I would say then you guys would either have to pick the first week of August or any time in August because of Cedric's schedule, and then we would really want to make sure we can get Ben here. Yeah. I think uh, for the purposes of moving forward, I think I'll reach out to Ben and see if he can make any other time later in August. So that way we have at least have a quorum. And if not, then we might move to the first week if everybody is fine with that. I'm just gonna say on the, I'm on vacation until the fourth, mm -hmm. um, but that's fine because Pamela's here. <laughs> 
if we're talking about the first week in August, I'm away from the 7th through the 10th. Yeah. And I'm driving back from Maryland on the 3rd. So I definitely don't think I can hop on. If you do it the first or second, I can. Okay. I will send out an email to Ben and then I'll connect with you, Jen, to send out something, whatever it lands on. All right, well, thank you everybody. And unless there is something else, then this meeting will be adjourned at 8.15. I just need someone to second. I need someone to second that, please. Second that. Perfect. All right, guys. Um, Victor and Juliana, great first meeting. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Okay. Have a good night, everyone. Bye, everybody. Have a good night. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody.